That's what I'm talking about. What's up, Chris? What's good, What's man? Up, my boy, how you feeling oh, today? Man, I, man, you know what? I'm feeling really good. I'm positive. I'm in, I'm just positive vibes only, man. I'm feeling real good, man. What's up, Tony? I see you over there. Whatever, pretty Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Look, real quick. So yes, yes. Get to it. <laughs> Look, get to it. Real, real quick. She's mad at me, y'all. Tony is mad at me. I, I made a huge mistake. I was in her neck of the woods. I was out there in Vegas and everything like that. And I stood her up. I, st- I stood her up. I was, I was, you know, I owned up to it. I apologized to her offline. But now that I'm online and I'm in front of everybody in the world to see in public, Tony breathe love. I'm so sorry, sweetheart. I am so sorry for the bottom <laughs> part. <laughs> you know, I, got, <laughs> I got nothing Notice to love the tone for. change. Listen, li- listen here. I am so sorry. You know, we were. We, I should have come, and I am so upset, and I apologize to you. Oh my god! But you know, like now, but just your apology earlier was sincere. So now we yes. just have to wait for Tony to actually accept it. Yes. Now, if she didn't accept it, then that'd be an issue, right? Then she got like I just wanted I wanted the world to know, yeah, how you stood yes. me up, and yes. I was looking kind of cute because I said, you know what? Oh, I said, good. what better way to meet pretty Ricky and Anjali is to be cute when I do it? But you okay? always cute. No, you watch this. No, I was like, fucking, oh, excuse hey, me. Extra no, 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 cute. no, watch this. <laughs> now, look, you said you was real cute to, 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 uh, to meet him, right? Don't pull that shit with me. You know better already. <laughs> <laughs> you, better put, you better put some sweats on, girl. You better come with your hair not done, like just chilling. Talk about what's up, Oh, homie. my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you I do man. accept your apology. I do understand. <laughs> It's Thank just you. that I get a little upset when I'm stood up. No, I'm I, hey, I understand. You have every right to be. No, you have I don't. every single right to be. No, you do. You have every single right to be. No, yeah. I don't. Because you know what I was doing, right? I was working. Probably working. Yeah. See, as always. Probably. So I understand. So when you come back, there's no excuses. And I got folks that will come out and hunt your ass down. Hey, talk oh. about it. Hey, I heard that. She said, get your life. Don't fuck with my time. Man. You, you better make sure I... you bring your ass over. When it's That's time. exactly what she, she told you. You That's exactly what she <laughs> She so, said, listen here. She said, listen here. I'm Cardi B. You Nicki Minaj. You better get your shit <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. She low-key threatened me, huh? You know, let the world see. She low key threatened me. She said, Look, I'm, I'm not gonna, threatening I'm you, you, pretty Ricky. No, <laughs> I was really, really looking forward to seeing you and Anjali. I mean, you know, I don't know if people realize you guys have been doing this now for the network for a year. Yeah. Yeah. It's, right. been, it's been over a year. Yeah. And the, the strangest thing is, is that all of the hosts are all over the country. Mm-hmm. And right. it's strange how we all have this great relationship and we've never met, never met each other in person. <laughs> you know, yeah, the only one, yeah, the only one that has uh, that he calls it his tour, his uh, birthday tour, Roland D. Um, <laughs> he came out and we did the show live together, you know, right. all of us under the same roof. Oh, I had, dope. yeah, I had a caterer here. Um, we just did it up because it was his birthday and it was the first time after, I think we were together for five years. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. And had never wow. met. Yeah. So yeah, we've still been talking about that. You and I got to do that too, bro. Oh, yeah, we do. Wild. I'd have all the cameras going at one time, all the mics up. It it would be a blast. That sounds like, a See, I'm digging that. Hey, that sounds like an interesting time. All the cameras up. That, that sounds like an interesting time, Tony. I'm just, I'm just letting you know. No, that sounds real dope. <laughs> that sounds real dope. Real you know what? Yo, don't only, shake your head. Don't only shake Chris your head. can turn this shit into shit. Now, let me ask you Wait, this question. Turn now, it into on, shit. Let me ask you this question. <laughs> I turned the shit into some shit, but we don't even know if I was talking about that shit. So where did your mind go? <laughs> Man, I can't stand y'all. Y'all are hilarious. Hey, but, oh but you my know God. what? Nasty is me, and don't you forget it. <laughs> Y'all crazy, man. Y'all crazy. 
I swear y'all crazy. Oh my so gosh. Look, look, we just started the show and you know we'll go on a tangent like sitting here just talking about all type of stuff. Yeah, but exactly. we gotta talk about the topic tonight, Tony. We gotta talk about the topic. Tonight. I know. I'm gonna I'm gonna get off. Um I just wanna start putting people's posts up. Telling um, you know, well, showing them that uh, you guys can say hello, and uh, don't Thank don't you. and and I'm gonna make this my last my last word before I go off. Yeah, because you turned it into uh, rich right now. <laughs> yeah, she giving me the she giving giving it to me. Go ahead, go ahead. So honey, any time that uh, pretty Ricky tells you he's gonna meet you somewhere. Oh damn! Talk about it. Hey, that's who I am. <laughs> Come on, man. She just can't bring it up next show. I got to get this shit out. I I, right. I got to get this shit out. See, look, even Jacqueline okay. said stood her up. Not right. Thank you, Miss no, Jacqueline. No, no, it's it's a long story. The turnip was real, but you know we, we already talked about it. So you know, see, that's look, one of the things too. We even <laughs> even after you talk about it, was it, him talking about it. Him talking. I can never you get a word in, in right? <laughs> See, that's how that's how marriages don't survive because we talk <laughs> about it, we apologize over it, but then the woman just wants to keep just poking at it. See now you uh -huh. now you what did I tell you on your, you your promo you video? <laughs> what did I tell you? I told you I was that it only lasted five minutes. Now I know why. Wonder why. Now I know why. <laughs> Wonder why. Oh my god. Right, so I'm right. sitting up here like this. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, Tony. Look, we love you. We love you. But look, you guys are just tuning in to Man to Man TV and Tony's rant. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You're tuned in to Man to Man TV tonight. You know, you probably saw the uh, the video that I, I did right before this show. We're talking about how to survive the first five years of marriage. Right, Chris? Oh, uh, yes. That's what we're going to talk about. Well, That's look, what we're going to talk about tonight, <laughs> man. We're going to talk about uh, the first, how to survive the first five years of your marriage. I mean, um, but before we get, like, really into that, of course, we got to thank our sponsors, uh, Shades of Africa, you know, in two locations. We also have to thank uh, SPMG Media with Gina Smith. Mm -hmm. We also have to thank uh, Urban Sentinel uh, with our very own host, Reggie Kearney. He hosts uh, Rural World News on Tuesdays. So make sure you guys go over to the Hot Topics Talk Radio website. That's hottopicstalkradio.com. Check out all the sponsors. Check out all the shows. From what I understand, I got to go back and check it out because I was I was at the uh, <laughs> visiting a friend at the hospital last night. From what I heard, the Hot Topics show was on fire last night. Yeah, I so said you and I both have to go check that out then. Yeah, I gotta go check. Either watch it and so, see. That's the thing people have to understand too. You don't have to if you don't see it right here. That means you can just watch it later. So normally, if I'm at the show, I'm gonna watch it at work, or I mean, exactly, I'm gonna watch it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Hey, we gonna edit so, that out. If anybody y'all try to get me in trouble with that, I'm gonna find you. But anyway, but how you gonna edit it? We're live, Chris. We're live. We're live. Because you can't edit because, nothing because I said edit it. Oh my God! That man okay. removing from that man removing from your mind. <laughs> okay, so look, man. So tonight's topic, you know, how to survive the first five years of marriage. I mean, first and foremost, I got to give a big shout out to my wife. Tomorrow, I'm celebrating 16 years of being married to my wife, and her being married to me. You know, 16 years. Thank you, brother. You know, I'm I'm so thankful. I'm, I'm fortunate enough that her and I, you know, we've made it through. We mm -hmm. made it through. So now things are smooth. And, you know, there's still issues and stuff from time to time, but things are a lot smoother than they were within the first couple of years, five years, you know, things yeah. like that. And we're going to talk about all that. Talk about the good, the ugly, the indifferent. We're going to talk bullshit. about all that tonight. Yeah, the bullshit, man. All that. The, the, the neediness, the the not letting go of certain things. We got to talk about it all tonight, man. You know, because I think we don't even got that. What, we don't even have that much time. <laughs> yeah, man. I know this might, this might have to turn into like almost a two part show. Might. We'll see. It depends on the audience too, because I want to, I want to see what the audience has to say as well. Uh, I know if you're just tuning in right now to man to man TV, I'm Richard. 
This is Chris. If you can, please be so kind. Press the share button right now on this page and share this 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 live right now on your wall because we want all the participation possible mm. on this show. All right. The show, you guys have been doing an amazing job of sharing the shows. Uh, we've had, the show has been growing and growing and growing every single week. Oh, yeah. And we thank you guys. Thank you so much for, for just being consistent and coming back to rock with me and Chris. So now that I've said all that, Chris, let's get into it, man. Let's go. So so how long have you been married now? I, you know, I'll be forgetting. It's like 11 years. <laughs> okay. It's one of them. It's somewhere. I forgot. Okay. It's like 11, 12 years. Okay. Like okay. All right. So you've, you've been married over 10 years, right? Yes. Okay. There it is. And I've been married, you know, celebrating 16 years, right? Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things, and I, and I see a lot of couples, they get married, they get divorced. I, I don't know. Maybe you have some friends that, that have been married and divorced, like since oh, you yeah. and your wife have been together. Mm -hmm. You know, did you did you see anything like that have hap that's happened where it was like, oh, wow, that's crazy. Like, man, I wish they could have made that, you know, made it through that. Did you see anything like maybe indicators or anything like that when you've noticed when you've watched their marriage? I mean, not really, because, I mean, you know, everybody has their problems. I mean, hell, it might be problems I have in my relationship where you might look at it and be like, whoa, like, damn, they, they finna break up like next week. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? And it's like, it just right. depends on the balance of the relationship. So it's like, you know, my thing is when I saw them, you know, get their divorce, it was, it was kind of an eye opener. But at the same time, like, I know the struggles that I have in my relationship and the things that I've gone through. So it's like, to a certain extent, I can identify and understand why they made certain moves or why they felt to do what they needed to do, you know? And I mean, it kind of right. just is what it is. Divorce is so common nowadays; it's not even really a big deal. And I think that's that's the sad part. Yeah, no, that's true. I think sometimes people get married for the wrong reasons. You know, I mean, granted, you know, we we get married with that. Like, I found the person that I love. I found the person that I plan on being with. And and I I don't know if it's getting married for the wrong reasons, but I think. Yeah. They get married believing that it's so easy now just to leave the person. There's been a shift to me where that 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 level of true commitment is is almost like non-existent. Where people view marriage as like boyfriend and girlfriend now. You know what well, I mean? Well, I think I think for the most part because you know it's in your face now. Like before, I mean, you might see like people will go through certain situations within your 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 comfort zone or your little circle, but now it's like hell. You can go on social media today and see that they having problems or people post their problems. So it's kind of like the normal thing. And even with like divorce, it's so pop. Like before, I remember when if you got a divorce, you probably it was like you you should be ashamed or people shamed you for that. Whereas now it's like, right. oh, for real, you got divorced? Shit, yeah, me too. I just got mine last year. Shit. Hey, on to, on to newer and better things. And I mean, that's just kind of how people look at it. No, no doubt. No doubt. So so since since we're talking about that, as far as like how divorce is, one of my key things, I think, honestly, uh, to help a marriage survive, you know, to is, is really being spiritually grounded. You well, know. let's start. Let's start off with just like, cause you know, like you said, first five years of marriage. So let's start off with just year one. Yeah, year so what, one. What do you remember in your first year of being married? Like how it went, how you guys responded to each other. Did you argue? How was the sex? Yeah. Like, let's get into it. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, the sex sex was always like great, but then there was like times when maybe she didn't feel like doing it. You know, things like Within that. Within the first year. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so let me ask you this year. question then. Because you say within the first year, do you mean that, like, it changed after you got married? or Because my thing is this, you were dating, of course, before you got married. So yeah. did that change when you got married? Or did that, or was it kind of... It wasn't, no, yeah. no. It, no, it wasn't kind of like, like, oh, I'm married, now I got them, I'm going to stop giving it up. I think it was more or less along the lines of... um it, it was it to me at that time, if I remember correctly, it was I wanted to do it all the time, and maybe our timing was off. Okay, 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Our timing was off because I mean, hey, within the first year, you know, she got pregnant, so we were obviously was doing. Oh our thing. yeah, okay. You okay. know what I mean? That makes more so sense we, to you when you explain that. Yeah. Right. So we were we were doing our thing, but it was one of those things where, um, I think the change happened. I think after we had our child, mm-hmm. a little bit, because after we had our child, it was it was kind of like. You know, me, I'm young, I'm a guy, I'm I'm vibrant. You know, she's not maybe not feeling all the way sexy or she's, you know, feeling some type of way sometimes. And so yeah. it was kind of like I'm tired, I'm busy with the baby, I'm doing this. And and my wife, she's a great, great, great mother. You feel mm-hmm. me? She's an excellent mother and she does such an amazing job with my girls. Um, but you know, us men, we still wanna, you know, do our thing. Well, see, my thing and is, so, I didn't have kids until a lot later. I, I want to say we were already together like four or five years before she actually got pregnant. So sex was still popping for me. Like the first year, it was like, hell, I could wake up and just turn over and be like, you know, just do my thing. Or, you know, hell, yeah. she been knocked out and, you know, I pulled her over to me. And it just, you know, sex was good, you know, in the beginning. I, I would say my first year of being married, everything went smooth. Everything played out exactly the way yeah. I wanted my place no doubt uh our money sex the yeah way we talk like it was still yeah. like that's like my home like that was my home girl that was my teammate my friend like we we no, were absolutely together. you know what i mean yeah no doubt and, and and see i think that's that's like the key you guys were you guys were friends and i and i and i have that same thing because that's what i'm saying like it wasn't really an issue until like maybe after you know we had you know our our first child together you know, well, and that's, see, that's what I would say, because like I said, mine, since it came so much further down the relationship, I can yeah. honestly say that around that fifth year, that's when a lot of our issues started like really coming into play. And I mean, to be honest with you, it was kind of like a downhill effect, even right. until this day, like with certain things, it's like there's a lot of battles within it. But, you know, I don't want to jump the gun, but, you know kids do play a big factor with how things, you know, get taken care of as far as in the bedroom or even, you know, the way you oh, deal with each other. No, definitely, definitely. But I think, too, you know, some of the things, too, I think when my wife, because I, I knew instantly, like, Anjali was going to be my wife. I knew it instantly, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And I think maybe it was because I knew her since I was 15 and she was 13. And then when we reconnected, you know, um, I, I just, I knew that she was the one for me. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, what you trying to get I some think... extra points tonight or something? What's that? What you trying to get What'd some extra say? points tonight? Yes, I am. You're saying yeah. all the right things, brother. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> well, no, nah, you know, I mean, you know, uh, but but she is. Like, for real. I mean, it's hard to explain, man, because we've seen, like, different couples go through you know different uh relationship changes and we've seen that you know and, and okay, so go to the but, but we made it through but i think go to, go to the second the year. what's that year two how did the second year play out for you man it's check the second year was smooth the second i mean the first five years was actually real cool you know we were we were cool with each other and everything the second year i think you know we were making transitions so we were going through the whole like where we want to move, where we're living. You know, she lost her grandfather at the time, so we had to take care of her grandfather in his last days. Um, You know, so there was a lot of different moving parts. There was so many dynamics going on, I would think. No arguing? Like, no big arguing? Well, yeah. Oh, yeah, there was definitely arguing. No, there was definitely arguing. Well, brother, talk uh, about the shit. (laughs) Okay, here it goes. Hold on one second, because I'm looking at some of the things here. Hold on. On the comments here, stand them on. Okay, I think this in the house. <laughs> What's that? No, my boy Dell. He's pretty funny, man. He said Chris in the house. I said, yeah, you damn right. That's oh, my okay. boy. <laughs> I think. Let me see now. I'm because I'm looking at two devices for whatever reason. I'm I'm seeing comments, but some of the comments aren't coming up on here. So you guys bear with me. Bear with me. Oh, see, I see. Latifa said, "I want to sleep. I want to sleep good tonight." That's why I'm commenting, girl. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. That was funny. Yeah. So, so, what was your first major disagreement? Um, 
I think that our first major disagreement was my wife wanted me always under her. Like my <laughs> wife, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and you, my wife wanted me always there. And I think I didn't understand like that was a part of her love language. Cause I mean, at 20 something years old, who the hell knows about love language, right? We didn't you know, know nothing about it. <laughs> I didn't know, I didn't know a damn thing about love language. You know, I'm thinking, you know, okay, uh, go to work, you know, come out, make this money, get this promotion, do my thing, you know, make this money. Right. Yeah. But none of that stuff really mattered to her. And so I would say things and I would say hurtful things or, oh, okay. yeah, I would say some hurtful things, man. And it, and, is and this granted, like still early, is this still like early in the relationship or is this like down the line? Like no, this is early. No, this is early, early oh. on. Yeah, this is early. I would say some hurtful things, but because I was always so blunt and and just straightforward, I didn't realize they were hurtful things. Yeah, you know. Um, What's interesting is time, I, it feel like you and I went through. Uh, we went through something different, totally opposite. Like you started off like that, and I feel like as the longer my relationship has gone it's gotten like more aggressive. Like we talk more at each other than we did before. See, cause I know the first, like I would say, honestly, my first five years were smooth. That was my, my homie, my ride or die. Yeah. Like we chill where I went, she went, I didn't hang out with anybody else really, but her. And yeah. somewhere probably within the fourth and fifth year was when the breakdown happened. Mm. Wow. That's crazy. You know, and, and, it, and it happens like that, though. I mean, it breaks down. I mean, it, it, and it, it either moves forward, you know, like, and that's cool that it's reversed like that. Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of insight? Well, it, actually, it could be good and bad because you said it happened later. So are you guys still kind of? Hell like, yeah. I don't want to go too far. Hell yeah. No, nah, see, one thing you under, you already know, me, straight up all the time. This is me. Like, like I said, okay. I want to show people what it is because when you get married, you know, and, and this is how I looked at it. <laughs> yeah. Because it was funny because, you know, marriage is a, is a huge commitment. And you really don't realize it until you actually do get married. Like, you're like, oh, right. shit, like, we tied. Like, you know, okay, we got a kid together. And now as a man, the first thing I'm thinking is, okay, yep, so that's a, if we ever do break up, yeah, she she taking money out of my pockets for sure, for sure. Because, you know, that's just the yeah, way it's but <laughs> Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. That and is. And it's true. like I think I think. Hold on, I was gonna no, go say ahead. I think I think where I really got nervous was when we got ready to buy our place, and you know okay. it, it became real for me right there because I'm thinking, okay, so it, it, this goes south because we were doing we were doing really bad. We've had a lot of years where I would say after the fifth year, it was good and it was horrible. And then it would just kind of like yeah. teeter throughout the year. And, you know, I think part every of it... relationship has that. I think every relationship has that. But, yeah, see, but what, I... what made you, but what made you guys stick it through, though? Shit, my kids. I love my kids. So at the end of the day, <laughs> I'm going to keep my family together. But at the same time, okay. that's not the right reasons. And you're trying to figure no, out not. like, OK, how do we build this back? How do we figure this out? See, a lot of people won't be real yeah. about stuff like that. But a lot of people stay in their relationship for their kids. And, you know, I don't know if that's necessarily the right thing. I'll be honest with you. I think when you don't stay for your kids, you made a selfish decision to be happy. And I don't know if that's right or wrong, because at the end of the day, I don't know your situation. So whatever decision you make is your decision. But I feel right. like most people won't be truthful and say, man, if it wasn't for these kids, I would have been left. But I'm the honest one. Right. I'm the real, because that's just me. Well, no, but you know, that's good that you're saying that, because I'm sure you're not the first person to think that. Hell no, I've talked to a bunch of people. <laughs> yeah, you're not the first person that actually stuck it out because of the kids. Now... Here, here's the thing, like, that's one major reason, like, that's one major reason, because, you know, you come from a two-parent household, so right. you want to make sure you give your kids a two-parent household, and mm -hmm. see, with me and my wife, I didn't come from, like, a two-parent household, granted, right. my father was around, but I wanted to be that person, and even, even my wife, you know, um, her, her mother and father, her biological father weren't together, you know, mm -hmm. he was around, but he wasn't to get, they weren't together. And so I think with my wife and I, we wanted to be that, that one within our, you know, within us to break that. 
And so I think I we've said, done a good job. So, because like I said, I like to I like to put the real shit out there. So I want to I want yeah. I want to fill you in. So I'm gonna hit you with some questions, and you can give okay. me the nod, or you can just answer it. <laughs> but my All thing right. is this: you know how much sex you were having before y'all got married, and when y'all got married. Yeah. Has it tapered down since you, you or even up to this point now? Has that has the sex tapered off? And oh, if you can't me. ask, when? Like what around what year? Man, I think, but see, I think it's always, there's always been that, you know, the tapered down. There's, I think it tapered down a lot. I can honestly say it tapered down after, after the birth of our second child, Melody, yeah. together. Because, you know, my, my wife, she has, uh, I didn't know at the time that it was something like called polycystic ovarian syndrome or something like that. It's, I think it's called polycystic ovarian syndrome that she has, which controls like it, it messes with her hormones and everything like that. Now she just literally wouldn't be in the mood. She'll have, she'll have these spikes of like being in the mood for like a long period of time. And then she'll just stop. And literally we're talking like, I don't, I just don't feel like doing it. And yeah. so I would get angry and I would feel, I would feel like, un like as if she wasn't attracted to me. And, and we, we've we've had talks about that too. But let me ask you this question. Has your sex yeah. drive died down since like, you know, cause it's like, you think about it. Cause you have, you know, you hear a lot of guys that'll be like, man, sex with the same person for all this time. I don't know if yeah. I can do that. So has your sex drive dropped down like a bit, you know, since, you know, or at this point? Nope. <laughs> and that's crazy because I can honestly not at say, all dude I can honestly say and I'll be honest like I think when mine started actually tapering down was when she got pregnant because right you know I was thinking you know God to bless me with this thing I, I you oh, know, wanted you this child all my life so I said I was right. worried I would hurt my baby you know or something like that you know you know having sex with her and you know of course you know working in the medical field people will tell you Boy, you can't do nothing. Like, don't worry, you fine. But at the same time, we had waited so long for her to get pregnant. I just didn't want to risk it. So we literally right. stopped having sex probably like after the fifth month. And I went that right. last however long until she had the baby. And even then, like, it kind of helped me because going back to what you were saying earlier, how your sex drive was so high, you always wanted it, wanted it. And you might have maybe approached her at the wrong times when she wasn't really feeling it. So... I honestly felt like with that little hold that I had, it helped me to calm myself down. Like before, right. I was like, man, I want it every day. If I can get it every day, I'm getting it every day. Girl, you ain't tired. Same here. Go. My sex drive has not changed at all. My sex drive has not changed. Now, hold on. Now, Anjali, you know, I'm, I'm reading the comments as they come in on, on another device here. My wife, she chimed in. She said, I have been through a lot of abuse from a previous short-lived marriage and unfortunately brought some of that baggage to this marriage in the beginning. You know, I want to address that real quick because, you know, she, she did, there was a, a lot, there was a lot of stuff that my wife went through and I, and I say it all the time. I mean, you know, Chris, I say it all the time that my wife could write a book, mm -hmm. you know, she could write a book with um, the, the things that, that she's been through, man. Like she has some of the most strength, the most strength she's been through things that would would literally break anybody you know yeah. from lo from losing a child um and and i'm gonna just put it out there <clears throat> i'm gonna put it out there you know my wife my wife well, i don't want to go too deep into this brother i don't want to go too deep into this <laughs> let's, well, let's 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 talk about some more positive stuff and, and negative well, stuff with no, their relationship but, <laughs> okay, well I'll just okay, you're right. We won't we won't go th we won't go too deep. But I will say that there were some obstacles that we had to go through and I had to love her through that and she had to love me through maybe some of mine. And yeah. so that's like a good a good segue into how do we deal with the baggage from other relationships? You know, because I think a lot of times we have this predetermined uh view on how things are supposed to be you know, in a relationship yep. before we get married, because we, we, when we're dating the person, we, you know, we, we see things that are, that are, that are similar. We like the characteristics, mm -hmm. things are cool. The flow is right and everything like that. But then once you get married, like all shit goes awry. 
you're you're not like my ex, which is the worst comparison, right? <laughs> right. You know, so I've heard that. Um, or then some people expect their wives to be like their mothers. Well, and husband. I was even going to say, you could actually look at it a little deeper than just uh, previous or uh, baggage from a previous relationship. Shit, talk about the baggage from your upbringing. You know, because that plays right. a part in it, too. You know, where it's like a woman looks at you more like a father figure or, you know, she's expecting a certain thing that she never got. So she's expecting you to uphold that well, role that she never received. Well, as a, but as a husband, in, in my opinion, in a way, you're supposed to bring that you're supposed to bring that type of leadership role, you know, to your marriage, though. You leadership I mean? role, not not parenting role. Not parenting role, but leadership role. But hey, whatever works in someone's relationship, you know, if if that's what she likes, I can't say that's a wrong thing. Well, you know what I mean. Well, the reason why I brought it up is because you know there are a lot of women that don't have fathers, so or the fathers weren't you know in their lives. So it's like, you know, like okay, I'll give you an example. Even in my situation, and you know, it was kind of like that, and it's like. You're kind of, they're watching you wanting to get that same feeling that they've been wanting to get from their own, you know, father and stuff. So it's right. like, there's a level of frustration, I can say, that I would have with it because at the same time, and I mean, hell, I remember even on like Mother's Day and I was cold on Mother's Day. I remember um, when she first got pregnant and I, I just got her a card and said, Happy Mother's Day. And I think I got her some flowers, but I got my mom a card, some flowers and a gift and all that kind of stuff. Right. So she's like, you know, and mind you, we didn't have any kids at the time. So she's like, yeah, why you didn't get me? You got your mom more stuff than you got me. And I looked at her yeah. and said, nigga, you're not my mom. And it's <laughs> it's my- like, what do you think this is? <laughs> like, I know who birthed Oh, my me. God. I don't I didn't know you. <laughs> so anyways. Yep. <laughs> but, uh, oh but but the reason why I had said that because it was just kind of like I knew I knew what she had, what she had wanted to be treated better than my mother and it was just no way impossible I was gonna actually do that now when she had my when she had my daughter I seen things a little bit different and I made sure to kind of make it equal but at the same time wow. I'm like look we're gonna make this equal but I'm not celebrating you on Mother's Day you gonna your day is Saturday my mom is Sunday. So I'm gonna take you out. I'm gonna pamper, pamper you. You gonna get taken care of. But on Sunday, where that's my mama, that's where I'm taking care of her. But you still gonna get your gifts and all that kind of stuff. But just out of respect, because I was, I always said, that's my mom. She took care of me. She did everything. So okay. why shouldn't she get that respect? And that was just well, my opinion. I understand that. Now hold on. Latifa said something. She said, "I find people married long have activities together, but also apart." Then she says, do you guys feel you lost you lost appreciation for your spouse being around them a lot? Uh yes. So you feel like wait, hold on. You feel like you lost appreciation for her being Oh, not around appreciation, a- but um I think in I think in the within the relationship, you tend to stop looking at the small things. And I won't say that more so on my end because one thing about me, I've always been known to show appreciation because I feel like that's what the world is lacking. So many people think things are just, they just happen just because. But there are a lot of small things that people do that go unnoticed. And I feel like it's my job to always show appreciation. But I will say Absolutely. when you're going above and beyond all the time and you're always making sure you're on your job, it right. tends to stop looking like, oh, you're just a good man, too. That's just what you do. That's what you're supposed to do. And I've even had her even tell me stuff like that sometimes. Like, well, that's what you do. You always do it. But it's like, yeah, I do that. But you should look at other men. You, or not even look at other men. If you heard other situations, you would understand that this isn't something that happens in every relationship. So versus saying, hey, you know, uh, that's what you're supposed to be doing. You should be appreciative and say, I'm just glad that you did it. Thank you. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, you know, for me, I I, I haven't lost no appreciation for her, for my wife. I bullshit. At all. No, I'm dead serious. That's not bullshit. That, I, I'm very serious. You know that. You know that's not bullshit. I love everything that you know. My, me and my wife, we we we're together every single day. And Latifa, to answer your question, we're together every day. We work together every day. Um, I married my best friend, like low key. I married my best friend. We laugh with each other, listen to crazy music. Like, 
we're almost like a, a, a unicorn, a rainbow unicorn, but we've been through it. It wasn't always like that. You know, we loved each other enough to go through that um, mm-hmm. and, and to get to that point. But I definitely appreciate her. I think. Um, what about the and, other one, Brown? Um, I think I know for sure she appreciates me. I know for sure my wife appreciates me. Um, are there times when I felt unappreciated? Absolutely. That's what I'm trying to get Absolutely. you to talk about. <laughs> no, but see, but see, here's the difference, Chris. Here's the difference. I'm not just going to talk about and air out all this shit to make my wife look crazy. That's not what I'm going to do. It's, but it's not but, about no, I, It's about just, just like I no, said, we talk no, about what good, I'm saying, we talk no, about Let me bad. finish my point. No, what I'm saying is, is I'm going to, I'm going to give you both sides. I'm going to give you the good and I'm going to give you the bad, but I'm not going to ever start off talking about my wife from a negative standpoint saying, oh yeah, she fucked up and did this. And that. I'll never do that. I love her too much to do that. What I'm saying is, is that there, there are moments where, um, of course I felt unappreciated, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? You know, and in those moments where I felt unappreciated, I felt like maybe I would find ways to lash out in other ways where I might be petty, you know? And mm-hmm. I think luckily I have close friends that know how to pull me back. And luckily she has close friends that know how to pull her back when I do, or when she does, you know, feels that way. And, and, and we never ever really tried to get to that point where we said too much that you just can't take back. I think that's the, the, the main issue for marriage. A lot of times, uh, when you are feeling unappreciated, you mm-hmm. say certain things that you just can't take back. You, you know what I mean? That's most people, and, yeah. and then over, yeah. And then over time, it, it, you know, it leads to divorce. And in the areas where I felt like unappreciated, unappreciated, is just doing doing a lot of work. You know, I was working and working and working and working. You know, and and dealing with a lot of stress. You know, and I felt, and 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 and, and this is like within the first five years. Okay. I, I would sit there and be like, what did you do all day? I would say mm-hmm. things like that. Not not really being mindful of the fact that she's been home with the girls, you know, with the kids all day, dealing with that, not really able to 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 find the time to get herself together too much because she got to do this, make sure dinner's done. You, you know what I'm saying? You don't, really find a, a, appreciate, you don't really find full understanding of that until you actually see it for yourself. <laughs> right, right. That's what I'm saying. And so I would, and so I didn't understand that because you know me, I'm gone at work eight, nine hours in the day. I'm rolling around dealing with traffic. You know how it is. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and so we don't really see it. And I think my father pointed it out to me and, and he was just like, man, he said, you know, what's wrong with you, boy? You know? And I was like, what do you mean? He was like, man, that girl been busy all damn day. He said, her job is harder than yours. Thankfully, mentally, it definitely is. <laughs> oh my God. But even physically, because I don't, you know, even physically, because I don't remember those times. No, nah, it's, 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 no, it's, it's only harder on them because they're not as tough as us. And yes, I did say it, ladies, because y'all be too soft on your kids and your kids be running you. I give you an example. One day, I had a day off, right? And I yeah. was like, all I'm going to do, my dad told me, he's like, hey, don't worry about nothing. Sleep as long as you want. I'm going to be here early. I'm going to get the kids from you. You come out that room whenever you want. I got the I got the kids. As a matter of fact, I don't even think my son was born at that time. I think it was just my daughter here. So I'm right. asleep, and I hear all this yelling in the back. And I'm like, damn, is somebody arguing? And I, th- I, think, right. I think at the time, my daughter was like maybe five. But they're like going back and forth. Like she's telling her, my wife's telling her, go do this, go do this. And she's talking back to her. And finally I said, Aaliyah, go do what your mom doing, told you to do it. Shut up. And I'm thinking myself, yeah. she got quiet after that and did exactly what she was supposed to do. But I was trying to figure out why there was such a dialogue for so long. And it's just because women aren't normally like as aggressive as we are. And at the same time, I also noticed too that since they're dealing with it every day, there are certain things that they're passive about. So they might not right. jump on the smallest things that since we don't do the job every day, we'll jump on it immediately. You know what I mean? So right. it's definitely a mind mental thing. But like I said, a lot of that is because y'all be letting your kids do what they want. Get get your shit together and, and discipline your kids. <laughs> no, that, and that's true. Now, okay, we have, a, we have comments rolling in real quick. I'm going to read through some of the comments so that our, our listeners can join the conversation. Anjali says, what's funny is he will randomly call me at times and tell me he appreciates me for doing this or that for him or the kids. Yeah, that's true. I, I did. I do do that. 
And then after that, Latifa, it, it, that that's that's interesting that you said that, Angie. Um, Latifa said, "What advice would you give to newlyweds other than don't go to bed angry?" Mm. Me personally, what, go ahead, Chris. You can go ahead and go ahead and give your advice boy. You ain't got it all course. in your head right now. You gonna put well, me on the spot? Anyways, I, I, I'll let you tell what advice you would what give to newlyweds. What advice I would get is. Uh, I would just say don't 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 start the relationship off with bullshit. I think I think most relationships start off with you wanting to impress and you wanting to make that person feel like you're every every you're that person, you're that perfect guy, you're that perfect woman. And I think if you are very clear about what you like and don't like right from the beginning, what you're looking for, what your expectations are, I think it just saves the drama from down the line. Because I think when you talk about it in the beginning, it's like you can't say, well, yeah. oh, I didn't know you like it like this. Like one thing I'll be honest about as far as some men and not even some men, a lot of men I've talked to, how they'll say sex has changed over the time of a relationship where they'll say sometimes we don't do it for a while. Sometimes we do it once a month. Sometimes we do it once a week. And it's crazy to me because it's like it's gotten to the relationship has gotten so comfortable. You you feel like you can do whatever you want. But that's why mm -hmm. I'm saying you have to be honest and upfront with what you're expecting out of your relationship. So that way it's like there's no excuses. Now, if you're not getting what you want, I don't know. That's one of those areas. I'm I'm in the gray area with that. I don't know if you should leave or if you should do the best you can to figure it out, which, of course, that should be the answer right there. But like I said, it depends on a person's situation. Right. No, I understand. Well, you know, and that's a good point. Like what I would say as far as like, um, you know, some of the advice that I would give to us men, um, for one, when you when you get married, your 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 wife, your wife is looking to you to be the leader of, of your home and of your family. And so you that's not always her... true, though. We got but, a lot but, of strong women out here. Well, and that that's true. But even the, str the strong women, they're still looking for a strong man to be a leader in their relationship. Strong women look at that. Trust me. You know, um, and I'll say this, like we have to, to figure out other ways besides physically making love you know, to um, that woman to just constantly find ways to make love to your woman. Find so many, many ways. Just let her know. It, it don't always have to be things. It could be something as simple as letting her know you're thinking about it. Um, mm. But consistently doing that. And then one thing I'll say to newlyweds, um, this is for men and women. Don't start nothing you can't finish. Don't start anything that you can't finish. If, if you, you know, if you uh, bring your husband's plate, you know, continue to do that. If you buy her flowers every Friday, continue to do that. That's the simple advice, uh, you know. But that, but that becomes hard too, because at the same time, like, yeah, you could easily say, "Don't start something you you don't you can't finish." But at the same time, there's a difference between being single versus, ha I mean, being I mean, being married without with kids and being married without kids. It changes the dynamics of how the relationship works. So, right, especially the more kids you add to the picture some of those things start to taper off. Like I remember, I think I was married. I think this was probably like the third, like third or fourth year within the marriage. And she got out, she got on me one day. and was like, I remember we used to go out all the time. Like we used to go eat every weekend. Like now we don't always go out and eat no more. Like we might go out like every two weeks, but we used to go like every week. And I was like, that was before we had real bills. Like we paying right. mortgages now. We paying like like the bills is real. Like this ain't dating where we was living with our parents no more. Like that. No, that's true. That's but it's true. but it's funny because to me, I'm trying to figure out why I have to explain that. Like as if you wasn't in the same relationship as me, you right. know. But no, that's, so that's what that's I'm saying. True. Certain things can change. Yeah. No, I feel you. Now Jacqueline, she chimed in real quick and she said, "That's so good. People go too far saying crazy stuff, you know, to each other." love my parents but they have been an example on how not to do a relationship love them <laughs> to death but truth is truth so right. she learned i, I appreciate that know, she, she, she learned from her parents staying together mm -hmm. you see while they while she was a child so she learned something now anjali comments and she said i would say effective communication don't be disrespectful and give each other space when needed to think or whatever you know, just think before you speak and not take it personal. That's good. That's good advice. You know, effective communication. Now, Latifa, I'm just going through these comments because I know we only have a little bit. 
Yeah. Tifa, she went through earlier and she said, um, you know, she, I saw a comment earlier. She said uh, about men being needy, if I'm correct. Hold on. Oh, yeah, I see it. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Yeah. Well, I, I don't. You see found it. it. I don't. I don't see it here. No. What did she you, said? Did you men need attention. Here? Do you ever feel like you wish you got the attention from your kids? Be honest. Okay. Men need attention. Do you ever? I see it. Do you ever feel like you wish you got the attention your kids got? Be honest. It, I don't. Is that to me or to you? That sounds like that's to me. It's just in general. <laughs> um. Oh, I get attention. Yeah, it sounds like it's general. I get. Boy, well, you it, crazy. It, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> My man don't said, know. it's up for you. It's up for me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't you know. Play. I think they'll yeah. put your name down if it's for you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, no, I know because the only reason why I was saying I thought it was for me because we were talking about how in the first five years I felt like there was a change in the dynamics after the two years when we had children, you yeah. know? So that's why I was thinking it was she was referencing me on that one. But um, but good. She clarified. She said it's to both. So that's good. So Jacqueline, she said strong women is strong. You know, wait, hold on. Strong women is strong, tired. That's the feminist in her talking. We were not built to be strong in so many ways than one. And see, and that's true. And that's that's pretty much what I was saying earlier, that when when you're dealing with a strong woman, she still wants a man a man to lead, a man to be the leader. That's, but, that's biblically how it's supposed to go. But see, I disagree you know, with that he, because even some of the women... But hold on, let me finish. Show, but even but hold some on, of the let women... me finish. What, what I'm saying is, is that I'm not talking about a strong man that can raise his voice and all that time. I'm talking about a strong man that will... See, here's the thing. When you're a strong man and you put yourself in a position to where you 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 have that leadership within you... That woman will automatically, she is built to yield. That woman would automatically yield to you when you make her feel comfortable enough and secure enough that you can handle your business. When you can handle your business and you and she knows in her heart and soul from her core that you are going to put your family first, that you're not going to do selfish things, that you're not going to put her hanging out to dry. She's all of this sounds business. beautiful. Trust me. Well put. Trust what I'm clap. saying. All the sisters throw your hands up. Hey, we talking about no, real that's life. The truth. We talking about real life, bro. We talking, talking about the bro we talking about brothers that go to work with us every day. All I'm saying is, <laughs> we not gonna act like all. Oh, so if the brother is going to work every day. We talking about the uh, the from Wakanda type brother right now. That's the type of brother you talking about. <laughs> well, that, but that, but understand though, that's the type of brother, brother that brother the value. woman is looking for. And be. I hear that, That's but what I'm explaining to you, and this is from, like I said, from experience of doing this show, we have had a lot of women come on this show that have talked, they showed their broad shoulders. I stand with the brothers. At the end of the day, we equal. I don't need no brother to take care of me. It's those type of women right there where I'm saying they're, they might want that deep down inside, but their actions show something completely different. And I think within saying that comment, you have to look at the generations because yes, if you're looking at like 90s and 80s and all that kind of stuff, there are proper training that was done there to where people understand how they need to operate. But if you're talking about within like 2010, these women and all that kind of stuff, like, come on, bro. These, no. these most of, The men and no, women don't even have that training in them at this point. But no, but see, that's the thing, though. That's that's the thing. Like, there are some women, honestly, man, they don't want to be they don't want to be the man. There are a lot of women I, that don't want to But we're not talking about but, that. We're no, but, about but, no but hear me out. I'll let you speak. Hear me out. We are talking about that a little bit because that that's the that's the precursor that happened, which is get, giving us the reaction that we're getting. Every action has a reaction. And so if the action is, if the reaction, if the action is there's oh, no man or strong enough or whatever, and then these women are like raising up to where they feel like they have to be men, mm -hmm. then we have that we have to operate in our rightful position and, and we have to be strong because no woman wants to be a man, dog. Trust me. Even if, even if she's a strong woman, 
Only thing you're going to do in being in your rightful position is getting her into a position where she operates in her fullest femininity, which is still strong. She's but not what I'm explaining to you strength. is that she might not want to be a man, but her actions are, are showing you otherwise. So at the end of the day, she might not even see it as a problem with how she carries herself, how she handles her business. So I, I, know a lot of, I, know, I know some strong women that talk crazy to men because and they I, know that they can't. Right. Well, no, they choose to because of their life experiences and they're going to forever until they until they learn from not talking to a man like that crazy or whatever the case may be. They're going to continue to possibly have those life situations. Well, watch this. They, they make those same problems. They, they do the same thing over and over because they don't see what they're doing as a problem. That's but that's I'm, a but that's a problem, man. That's nuts. But that, they don't that's a problem. see it though. So that's what I'm explaining to you. At the end of the day, there are some women that just, like you said, they all want a man. That's not true. There are some women that'll be like, I just want an equal partner, somebody that somebody that can break bread with me and we can build and, and and do this together. I don't need nobody to take care of me. There are some mindsets of women that are like that. I'm not saying most women. I'm just saying that there are some women that are like that, regardless if the brother does everything great or not. And that's fine. But see, there has to be certain things that shown. There's always going to be that negative sign. There's but always don't make it seem that. like if the brother got it going on, I'm not even talking about she's gonna, going to that she's going to automatically submit and do that. I didn't say that's not necessarily true. I did not say automatic. It well, takes you said time. it's in her to want to it submit is. to him. It is. But that's not it, true. That is true. That's how they're built. Based off of, based off of what, 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 what do you have? Here, to here, here's the thing. Based off of marriage, based off of a, the way a woman is made, a woman is made to yield. It, her physical makeup. So are you telling me this holds true for every woman? Look, man, it's life experience. No, I'm asking you that question. Are you saying that holds true for every woman? Let, let me tell you something, Chris. Life experiences, bro. And then that man that has not presented himself. See, the, 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 here's the issue. Here's the issue. Here's the issue. And this is getting a little off topic. We're talking about something different. We've been asking a question. <laughs> no, I am. Here's the issue. I'm sitting up for this one. The, the thing is, man, is, is there's so many women that have been put in a position to where there's a lot of guys that um, don't show that consistency. And then you have a lot of men who are looking for the wrong things within a woman. They're not looking for the, the right things. And so what you end up having, and then you have to look at how the, 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 the parents raise that woman too and her life experiences. There's so many different things, so many factors. Mm -hmm. But when a man is strong enough to love through, love, love her past all that bullshit, love mm -hmm. her through all of that bullshit, you know, you have to love her through. Love is going to be the only thing that pierces everything, bro. Like, when, when I met my wife and everything all over again, like, she was broken, bro. Like, she was broken. She had love. She had her idea of what love was. Our first argument, man, my wife put up her fist because she thought we were about to physically fight. Mm. Because that's what her experiences were. You understand what I'm saying? Her yeah. experience was to fight or flight. That was her experience. And she thought that because we disagreed about something that we were going to fight. Like, and, and she didn't know if she had to dob, bob and weave because she was abused. So, so, we you, a, we so, you, felt like, so you felt like that's, that was what she felt like happens in a no, normal that's what, relationship. No, that's what it was. Because the only, problem, was. the only problem I have with that and even knowing her, I wouldn't even necessarily say that you can say that that's what she knew. Because when you come from a family, you know the difference. So we're not yeah, going to say you can like, know the difference but when you're no you can know the difference but do. when you're but when you're intimate when you're intimate with someone and you're entrusting someone because you have those family values and when you're entrusting someone to love you and to mm -hmm. not hurt you or break you or damage you and that happens that next man there's nothing that that Oh, okay, I definitely do. agree with that. But that next way, man is going to my question. That. But it's all good, though. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. What was your question, man? What was your question? That question is done and go. But at the end of the day, it was live. So you see, he didn't answer. But basically, what I was saying was all women 
don't always want their man to step up or want a man to take lead. They might say they do, but their actions will lead to show something a lot different. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they're doing it on purpose. That might just be the way they were groomed. So at the end of the day, they're doing what they know, but they don't know they could be stepping on that man's toes. And it's hurting him from doing the job that he's trying to do. And that's why I was trying to say, it's not, it's not most women. I'm just saying there are some women that just don't allow a man to be a man. See, one thing you got to understand about me no, is I'm always, gonna show, I'm always going to throw shade on men and women. And the reason why well, no, I'm like that because that. there's I think we bullshit need to make that a show topic, all Chris. ends. And I think when we're honest about it and we really put the real shit out there, it helps people to understand what to yeah. pay attention for. So that way you don't end up making the same mistake. That's but I think at the, I at the end of at, and I agree with you, Chris, I think we need to do a, to a topic on that about maybe some baggage. You know, we did a show like that uh, a while ago, but I think we need to talk about that, like some baggage and you know, all that good stuff, you know, because, um, you know, it can, it can affect the marriage. But the, the, the key, honestly, to me is still just loving people through it, you know, because I honestly believe that you can love anybody through it. You know, yeah, you can but, love but, anybody also, but also say going. this part too. It's almost, it's almost like you telling, uh, like, it's almost like a person from the suburb trying to tell somebody from the hood. Yeah. You can, you, you can go anywhere you want in this world. It's two different lifestyles. So when you say all you have to do is love people through, remember this as well. Some people don't know what love is. So and that's, that's true. has to be taught. So you can't expect that's somebody true. to give somebody something they don't even know. No, so. and that's true. But see, and it, but see, this is why when we started the show, I said in the beginning, you, you know, in the first five years of marriage, you guys need to be keep keep God involved in the relationship. Be spiritually grounded. Oh, yeah. Find a good church mm -hmm. home. You know, I was saying that because the enemy, when you get married, when you get married, and I, and I tell my friends this that are, that are newlyweds, when you get married, you make a union with God. You now have a triangle relationship, right? And the enemy don't like that. If you're a believer in God, then look, let me just preach to you real quick. Satan don't like when you get married because he would rather you not be married, live in sin, and have children in sin and do all these other things so that he can prove that, you know, he won, you know. But at the end of the day, when 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 you get married, you have a triangle relationship with God and he, you know, he's going to bless you if you can stick through it, if you can stick through it. I'll be honest. Um, man, look, and I get that. The only thing I don't do is I don't usually do a lot of preaching because you what well, you're most people say, just, what you're most people say. Bit. yeah, just a little bit. But what you'll hear most people say when they're in a situation, when they're going through it. It's like they they don't want to hear preaching because at the same time they can't identify it to that moment, which you should actually still hear it. But I'll be I'll tell you this: the best way how to keep everything smooth and to keep from having issues, don't pay attention to nobody else's shit. Don't look at social media. Don't look at anybody else's relationship. Don't compare yourself or your relationship to anything else because the moment you do that is when you open the door for problems. I will say that was oh, yeah, that's true. That's the biggest a good point. mistakes I probably that's an have excellent made point. is paying attention to how other people do things and saying, "Well, damn, why my why my stuff ain't like that? Why she don't?" No, do that's it? an why excellent. Point. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, no, that's so an excellent. Like, point. That's the best thing you could do is mind your own business. Only pay attention to your own relationship. The moment you start noticing other people's stuff, that's when you're going to start having issues. Best, that's no, the that's, best advice I can give you. No, and that's true. That's, that's, a, that's a good point, you know, because a lot of times I think every, every person, you know, goes through that where we forget that our, our own individual lives or even for our, our own family it's a marathon and it's not a sprint. You know, we, we tend to want to compete what this person has, what that person has. That's an excellent point, man. You know, for real, run your marathon. Now, there, there's a few more comments, man, that I want to go back to before I bring Tony on because okay. we're almost to that point. Um, you know, at the end of the, let's see, let's see. We have uh, Jacqueline. She said, um, feminism was the worst thing that ever happened to women. The biggest trick of the enemy. Mm. She said, I had to learn how to be comfortable. Jacqueline said this. I had to learn how to be comfortable being a real woman, not a man in disguise. There's nothing wrong with that. Lakeisha, she said, yes, cousin. I see you, Keisha. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love Lakeisha, you. she said, keep it 100. You know, Jacqueline said, that's true, Chris. She agreed with you. 
um, Jacqueline, can't, this is my can't play the comparison game, single or married. That's true, Jacqueline. You can't play the comparison game. Um, you know, now, Chris, I'm going to give my final last words in a minute. Do you have any final last comments before I bring Tony on? Yes, uh, but it's not guaranteed the con- it's not guaranteed the show, but just more so, just helping people. I don't know. I feel like I don't know. I, I'm just feeling different about my life, and I feel like I'm just I'm more of me than I've ever been. And the reason why is because I'm more open about life. I'm more open about how I feel about how I do things. And you have to be careful with that because at the same time you might offend like somebody. Right. You might be disrespectful with it. And the thing is, I'm. I'm in a stage right now where I'm being mindful. I wait and then I think it through and then I say what I need to say. But I encourage everyone to stop living these phony lives. Stop, you know, holding things in. Stop being untrue to yourself. Like, just be straight up with people, straight up with situations. Yeah. If situations go away, they go away. One thing about God is he is always favorable to good people. So guess what? And it might not happen when you want it, but it will happen. So, don't feel like you have to hide or hold yourself down because you're trying to be fair or you're trying to be politically correct. Just be honest and straight up with yourself and just be real. Fuck the bullshit. Okay. So that's 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 a good that's a good I like that. That's good. Now now one more comment on here because Lakeisha B, she said, Well, some of these ladies can't trust themselves until they know you're a strong man. Some women are yeah. so strong. From carrying the load for so long, but trust women desire someone to come along and be strong in more ways than one. That's 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 yep. good. La- mm-hmm. And Latifa, hold on, let me see Latifa. She said, "Chris, you don't think you just speak?" LOL. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting. Ba- I didn't say I was doing it all the way right. I just said I'm. I'm this is what I'm doing. I'm getting better. <laughs> now, now you know what? Real talk, man. What I say. As, as my final thought before I bring Tony on, um, you know, to survive the first five years of marriage, understand what your marriage was built on. Mm-hmm. Love, respect, and, 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 you know, it has to have God. You have to have God in your relationship. That's the only way you're going to build a, a strong foundation. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the only way. yeah, I will preach a little bit. You, you know, if you're if you're a Bible reading person, you know, and you believe in God, because I can only tell you by the grace of God that my wife and I are going to be celebrating 16 years of marriage tomorrow because we've been through stuff. We've gone through stuff. We've loved each other through those things. But God has been, you know, right at the center of it. Have we go, did we go through things that could have tore us apart? Absolutely. We did. We through normal marriages, it probably would have broke them up. But, you know, but that's the trick of the enemy. In John 10, 10, it says that the thief cometh not but to kill, steal and destroy. But he says that I have come so that you may have life and life more abundantly. So understand those principles that when you're when you're getting ready to move to a new level in marriage and commitment and loving the person that you're going to be with and you're getting to that new level, you're going to deal with a new devil. That new devil is going to do everything he can. He's going to put all the girls in your face. He's going to put all the men in your in your woman's face to try to separate y'all. He's going to talk, you know, talk through uh, your in-laws. He's going to talk, talk through some of your single friends. There's going to be so many different elements. You just have to know how to recenter yourself. You know, you have to know how to recenter yourself. No, hang on to the reason why, you know, you guys married each other. And then if you married that person um, and you still had your baggage, have that faith in God to know that it's okay. So you're supposed to put your trust in God in your relationship. And then you're supposed to love and build with your mate. You know what I mean? So that's really what I, I honestly, as my final thought, have to say, man. You know, and don't ever say anything that you can't you can't take back, man. Effective communication is really the key. And just constantly love and love and love and respect each other. That's real talk. Um, that's my final thought. Yeah, you know, too. and I probably will have another <laughs> final thought, Chris. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna hey, bring Tony hey, on, man. Yeah, I, know, I know Tony's been itching that. to get on. What's that? You had about five final thoughts within that whole topic. <laughs> hey, it all needed to be said, man. This this is one of those shows, honestly, man. That there's not enough. There's not there, there's not enough that could be said, man. No. There's not enough that could be said. It could be a two hour show. And there's you know? no really no right or wrong because 
it just depends on where you're at in your relationship and who you guys are to each other, how much respect you have for each other. You know, yeah. some people will say, you know, don't talk to your mate all crazy or don't be cussing at him and stuff. And you have some couples that be cussing each other out. But guess what? Still got the best <laughs> relationship in the world. You'd be trying to figure out how it works. But it works. Yeah, find them. your magic. <laughs> find your magic. You know, find your magic. Now, Tony, I saw you typing away. A million miles a second, um, like towards the end. You said, I can't wait to come <laughs> on at the end. I can't wait. So so you won't. What well, you, what's up, girl? Well, the, the reason why, it, and, and it had to do with why is Chris gone? <laughs> oh, my God. Wait, I think he jetted out. I think he jetted out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is. Oh, okay. MG. He keeps me guessing. I told you, when you jump on the show, you do something to my camera, I can't see you. So I said, I'm just going to jump off and jump back on. I don't do anything to your camera. You're trying to silence me. Oh. I really don't. Um, okay. No, but it was a comment that was made, and I believe it was by Jacqueline. Okay. Um, and she had spoke on the feminist movement. Mm -hmm. oh, and Being the worst. Thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, and and the feminist movement was not developed with any balance. No, nope. it was either all or nothing, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And then I I kind of took that where uh, Miss Latifa had asked for advice for newlyweds, and I kind of thought, how does that tie in together? Because I think one of you guys said you were off topic. Well, in a lot of ways, Just you really bit. weren't. Right. Well, and I'm gonna tell you why you weren't. Because when the feminist movement came up, I thought about how that can destroy a marriage. Right. And yeah, it, it can destroy a marriage. And it and and you see it now because we have the worst divorce rate in history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's bad. Uh, yeah, we have the very worst di divorce rate. But the way that I found the parallels when those two comments came up was that in the feminist movement, it was there so that women can stop being abused, stop being mistreated, have rights to vote and things mm -hmm. of that nature. It wasn't developed to tear down a family. Right. And that's where the imbalance was. Mm -hmm. So when Latifah had asked, what would be your advice to someone who is going into a marriage who are newlyweds? The parallel I found with that and with Jacqueline's comments is don't let the feminist movement come into your home. No, that's true. That's real. I think I, I and I, I, I and I, I'm not married. I, I was okay, but um, after years and maturity and uh, getting to know who I am as a woman, getting to understand men a little bit better, mm -hmm. and understanding the um, the roles right that we should be playing right. Okay. It makes it it makes it a little bit more clear. The clarity is there. And if you don't let these feminist movement ideals come into your marriage, then you will be fine. A woman is supposed to be soft. They are supposed to be giving mm -hmm. and nurturing and uh, family oriented and all Absolutely. these different things. Right. And for someone like me, single uh running a radio network and still working and doing that and bringing home my coins and all of that i consider myself strong in the areas of what i need to be in order to have raised my son yeah. run a household and get up and go to work every day however i am not strong when it comes to a man because i know my role as a woman mm. Good for you. So and that's where I like, that's where I think that a lot is lacking with today's women. And that's what I was trying to explain earlier, because yes, there are women that do want to be catered to, want to be, you know, taken care of by their man. But at the same time, because of how times have changed and how they're so busy wanting to be an equal, that actually destroys a part of the relationship. I mean, hell, even from somebody close, I know they were, uh, she was married to this guy. And she made more money. And it 
in a way, it made him feel less of a man because she took care of most of the stuff. And then he would question her, like, on stuff she would buy. Like, why you waste your money on that? She's like, well, first of all, this is my money. Like, and then, uh -oh. right. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see right. the problem already yeah. with right. that. You see right. the problem already with that. Yeah. But it's like yeah. the same And see, and that's... Right. And see, and that's the problem. There's no way Absolutely. that a woman should make a, a man feel uh, less important or uh, right. Yeah, yeah, because you are emasculating men. And that is why we've got the, the breakdown in communication when it comes to right. men and women. Right. Women want to be able to just say anything that they want to say to a man. Ooh, and ooh. you can't. Oh, now watch this. And I need to say this. Let's just get this clear. Uh oh. I never think that it's appropriate for a woman to ever talk crazy to a man in public. Now, when you behind closed <laughs> doors, that yeah. is a whole nother thing. Y'all have y'all words. Yeah. That, hey, yeah. Woman, and I'm telling you, woman, you better get your shit together. Don't disrespect no man in public like that because you don't know what you're doing to a man when you do that. Right well, now. you know what? And I, and I have to stop you there because it's just not in public. And thank you, Latifah. I, I appreciate your words and your, and, and your, and your comment and, your, and, uh, and, and your love on that. But, um, it's not just outside your home. Right. You can do the most damage and emasculation behind closed doors because Absolutely. you will say things that you wouldn't say out in public. Right. Now, how you act in public, you might do that. Well, I, but your words are going to be filtered in a lot of ways. Right. But your words will be filtered yeah, in a lot of definitely. ways when you're out outside of the house. Now, when you are behind your closed doors, Sure, you can have an argument, you right, can have, have a, a disagreement, disagreement. Yeah. you can, yeah, but, but at the end of the day, you still have to remember that this is the Respect. man of the house. Right. It does not matter how much money he brings in, there are still roles. Right. And, and, and I'm not saying, yeah, because I'm not saying that women have to always be the ones to wash the dishes, do the no. things in the house and all that. I'm not, and I don't want anybody to mistake that. Right. Because that is not what I'm saying. Right. What I am saying is that men and women, women are never going to be equal. Because if we did, then the woman would have a D along right. with her tits. Right. And the man would have tits along with his D. That would make you equal. Right. Now, that's true. Okay. Scary. We have different roles, yeah, man. We have different roles. No, I'm just saying, yeah, we you know, because roles. we, exactly. And that's the part that I think a lot of people miss yeah. is that you do have roles. Women are not supposed to be hard. Now, in certain situations when you do have a man, yes, there are certain situations where you will be uh, thrust up against where you might have to take on that strong right. lead because he, right. he wants you to. But that. let's be honest though. There are a lot of men that are pushing women to do that because they're not stepping up to their roles. That, that is true. And I agree with that, but we as women and you as men, we have to really take hold of what our roles are. Exactly. We really have to take hold of it because society says that, yes, we are equal. No, we are not. No, we're not. Right. We'll never be equal. No. And women, stop emasculating your men. Stop emasculating men, period. Because the society that which we live is what we have created just by emasculating men. And if your woman is doing that men. to you, sir, and this is your wife, you wait till she go to sleep and you put your thing right in her face and you slap <laughs> right across the face with it. You let her know. Woman, you better get it together. <laughs> well, no, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, that's what it brought. That, that's exactly what we were, what, what, what needs to be said. You know, that's exactly what needs to be said for real. Chris and Tony, you know, because I think that's where. About the thing across the face? Happen. No, well, no, 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 not no, that part. No, I'm talking, I'm ignoring you. <laughs> I'm ignoring you. <laughs> I'm ignoring your shenanigans I right now. I thought it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> of course you no, did. No, man. No, I mean, this was a good topic. This was a good topic, you know, and I'm glad that people tuned in and chimed in and stuff, you know, but I'm glad you brought that point up, Tony, um, because I think that that definitely could um, lead to a divorce or even, or, or maybe not even divorce. It can lead to your dude just cheating on you and going to a place. Lead all kind going of to that. Things. Yeah, it yeah. can it can it, lead yeah. into that, you know, it, yeah. or vice versa, or vice versa. Yeah. You know, when you start yeah. downing your woman and knocking her down and things like that, trust me, she's gonna call old Brody to build her back up. You know Talk what I mean? Yeah. And Brody gonna send her home, you know, different. 
walking you know, different. Broke, she gonna come home softer. Hey, that, yeah. Hey, that's when she really gonna come home talking shit to you. <laughs> <laughs> All the way. So look, man. Look, let's wrap this show oh up, man. Let's wrap this show up. You know, I want to thank. <laughs> all of the listeners for tuning in tonight you know tony we couldn't do this show without you guys at all without the you know hot topics talk radio we couldn't do this without you so thank you for all thank the hard you, work that you do on the weekends um during the week behind the scenes those times when good. i get stood up yeah thank you yeah the I times when you get stood up and and i because i'm sitting there telling you well girl get to work girl go get get to work <laughs> Look, know your role. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> know your role. No, but but real talk. I I really, you know, Chris, you had some real insightful things tonight. Um, Tony, you definitely had some insightful things tonight. You know, Chris and I, you know, Thank you know you, how man. it is, man. We don't always agree on everything, but we do have I meaningful ain't things. I bullshit. To say. I'm gonna tell it like it is. I told you that, man. And look, I'm not with no bullshit either. And I'm not also about dogging women, Negro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, you just you just about. Fluffing it up, fellas. This is what happens when you hang out with your girls. Nah, man. You hang out with girls too much. Got to get with the fellas. <laughs> oh no, I hang. I hang with fellas, man. Trust me. I hang with men. Well, grab trust your balls me. and act like they still there. Then let's go. Hey, trust <laughs> me. My balls are there. They hang low. <laughs> trust me. <laughs> but look, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. You've been watching Man to Man TV. Make sure you tune in next week, um, every Thursday at 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, where me and Chris, we're going to talk about different things, uh, different topics. If you guys have topics that you want us to talk about, you know, go over to the Man to Man pay, uh, TV page and let us know what you want to talk about. Inbox us a topic. We'll be more than happy to bring it up on the show. Also, check out Real World News on Tuesday with um, our very own Reggie Kearney and uh, Chara. I believe they come on at 5 p.m., uh, Pacific Standard Time at uh, 5 5 30. 5 30 Pacific Standard <laughs> Time. Thank you, Tony. And then make sure you go check out Hot Topics every Wednesday evening. Wednesday, you know, it goes down on Hot Topics Wednesday at 8 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. And then, you know, it gets real, all the way real on Man to Man TV every Thursday. Okay. So, of course, thank That's you to all crazy. of our sponsors, SPMG Media with Gina. Urban Sentinel with uh, Reggie Kearney, as well as uh, Shades of Africa with their two locations. And I believe Miss Stephanie, um, she, you know, thank you for her as well. But for more information on our sponsors, go over to the Hot Topics Talk Radio.com forward slash sponsors. And uh, you can see all the sponsors, see discounts, everything like that. And if all remains the same, we will be here next week. All right. Don't judge us, just pray for us. Right, Chris? Can I add? Can I add yes. something? Yeah, go ahead, Tony. <laughs> what kind of smile is that, Chris? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> don't forget to also subscribe uh, to all of the shows on YouTube. Uh, go under Hot Topics Talk Radio Network and subscribe to the channel. So that way you can catch up on all the shows as well as be able to find out whatever else is coming next with these two guys. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> That's right. Because, you know, it gets crazy and it goes down. But thank you guys so much for your participation tonight. Uh, make sure you share the page. And thank you so much for all the listeners. Uh, Jackie, Shug, Anjali, uh, Latifa, Lakeisha, um, you know, just everybody that tuned in and had some something positive to say. Or just boy Dale. To say. Thank you. Your boy what? Dale. Yeah, your boy Dale. There we go. So thank you guys so much. We'll see you guys next week. We went over a little bit this week, but we'll see you guys next week. Same time, same place. Hot Topics Talk Radio. We will see you next week. Love y'all. Wakanda, Wakanda forever. forever. Wakanda forever. <laughs> <laughs> Love y'all. Bye-bye. Bye. Good night. Good night. And we're clear. <laughs>